This lecture on secretagogues is to address a couple of very important aspects to our practice of age management. Interventional endocrinology is the term that I use. Um, because as the cost for growth hormone continues to go up and up and the hurdles and the barriers for our use of it by the federal government and also by the uh, state medical boards. I sit on the California Medical Board and you know, I see cases that come by where physicians are appropriately using growth hormone but forgot to do a challenge test, which is a big no-no. So the federal government, because they've got so much money, federal government has passed the uh, policing of the use of uh, not only testosterone but also growth hormone back to the medical board, and they're the ones who are going out on the witch hunt. Anyway, this discussion is on secretagogues. I try to be non-prejudiced as can be since there are uh, a number of good products out there. And in my practice, I used to use some 30,000, 40,000 units of growth hormone uh, a year uh, because of these changes in the legal milieu. Uh, you know, I didn't want to lose my license, go to jail, and have my three daughters think I'm a, a loser. So I uh, looked at the world of secretagogue technology back in uh, 2001, started working in that venue. And secretagogue should take the position as now, well, the information I'll give you should take a position as the logical first step before you go into using injectable growth hormone. Because the literature does support the efficacy of the products. It's not 100%, as you'll find out in the Sunday lecture on uh, traumatic brain injury and hormone deficiency, that if the pituitary is involved in 14% of the cases as it's documented, you can't get a secretagogue to work. And in those cases, you absolutely need to put injectable growth hormone into the mix. So regulations, as I said, are very stringent these days, and the medical boards and DEA will be on you. Uh, now, uh, even though growth hormone is a uh, Rx, it's being monitored like a class three drug like testosterone. And as you probably already know, HCG, which was an RX, is being monitored as a class three drug in 16 states. I also have a pharmacist license and have, you know, have to keep up on other states and what's going on. So in order to be able to do or dispense or prescribe growth hormone injectable, uh, you have to perform either an ITT, which is contraindicated in anyone with cardiovascular disease, heart attack, or someone who's had a uh, traumatic brain injury, because it can induce uh, in everyone uh, but Dr. Lee's patients, you know, hypoglycemia. Uh, the GST, which is the glucagon challenge test, which is uh, another that is uh, uh, used. Um, insurance companies prefer the ITT, but you can still use the GST and um, have protection against uh, one of the agencies coming in and harassing you for failing to do a study. It's not mandatory, but it's recommended. And if you don't want to have them, you know, splitting hairs that you didn't comply with the standard of care, make sure you do a challenge test. Cost considerations, uh, somatotropin cells for 24 to $42 per unit, uh, about $1,000 a, a month. It used to cost about uh, 280 when we used to get the compounded uh, growth hormone legally brought into the United States in New York and then disseminated until the government came in and said, you're spending $1.2 billion sending it to China for 190 uh, amino acid chain of growth hormone. We want you to stop. Otherwise, when it was company, they said they'd take them into uh, court and have them burn a couple of million dollars. And they'll probably win, but they'll still lose the ability to uh, circulate growth hormone. So efficacy, uh, the secretagogues are being found to be very efficacious. Uh, as I said, there's an uh, anatomical uh, failure of function in 14%. In some of the products that I look at, there's a 11% uh, failure in some of the other products. And just to touch base that we're talking about the same thing, a secretagogue is any substance that causes another product to be secreted. So um, similar to what growth hormone uh, releasing hormone does, it stimulates the somatotropes to produce growth hormone. So all the uh, growth hormone secretagogues take that position of trying to stimulate the brain to produce and release uh, growth hormone. Well, it turns out there's about seven different pathways. Unbelievable. You know, when you look at the, the, the pathways that are available, you know that whoever designed our system wanted to make absolutely sure 
that there was an adequate amount of growth hormone pumping in our body every second, every minute, every year of our life because of the functions that it uh, is involved in or the functions that they're involved in or it's involved in is so overwhelming. That's another story. Anyway, many of the secretagogues used presently are single pathway products. As I just said, the most common ones are ones that stimulate or simulate like growth hormone releasing hormone and stimulate the uh, receptors to release um, somatostatin or uh, growth hormone. Newer products are being developed that address one or multiple of the pathways, the seven different pathways. The issues that have to be looked at with a single pathway is tachyphylaxis, just like with any other product, and something called homologous downregulation, where um, I'll show you an article where it talks about um, prolonged or repetitive stimulation of somatotropes leads to their downregulation, or stimulation of the receptors leads to downregulation. The body is trying to make sure that the production of growth hormone is very tightly controlled. Some of the players in the uh, process of our production of growth hormone, the anatomical structures, the hypothalamus, the arcuate nucleus, the paraventricular, and the pituitary, and then the chemistry that's involved from ghrelin, growth hormone receptor, uh, somatotropes, somatostatin, growth hormone. There are five different variants of uh, growth hormone that our body actually produces. We only talk about one. The importance of having a healthy liver. Growth hormone goes to the liver and stimulates your IGF-1, your IGF-2, your binding protein 1 through 6, and something called acid labile subunit. How many people test for acid labile subunit, ALS? No one. Okay. it's a good start. Also, uh, IGF-1 and IGF-2. IGF-2 is the main uh, growth factor that's in the brain as we're developing. Very, very important. You can stimulate it to be uh, produced so people with traumatic brain injury, post-stroke, and so forth can have the benefit of recovery repair to some degree. Dopamine is a uh, receptor, DR2 receptor, stimulates growth hormone. Then there are some of the coupling proteins that deal with interaction with the uh, growth hormone releasing hormones. Vitamin D, believe it or not, has a major function in the brain, and that's why if you read some of the literature, the benefits with depression, dementia, and Alzheimer's from growth hormone level. And then melatonin. Melatonin in and of itself is an incredible uh, antioxidant, protective antioxidant, as well as it itself stimulates growth hormone production. So central and peripheral control of growth hormone. Centrally, you know, you've got the um, growth hormone releasing hormone that stimulates or connects with its uh, receptor, um, stimulates somatotropes to produce growth hormone. If your growth hormone level gets too high, then somatostatin, also referred to as somatotrope release inhibiting factor. Um, the liver is circled down below because if you have someone with fatty degeneration or on certain medications, you can lose the maximum benefit of growth hormone stimulating IGF-1. And we've, you know, spoken about IGF-1 as being the moderator or mediator of GH. Well, it has... A lot of things that IGF-1 does in and of itself, as well as growth hormone, has a long list of things that it does itself, so you need both of them. But in terms of uh, enhancement of ribosomal protein synthesis, IGF-1 does it. In terms of cortical bone, growth hormone does it. In terms of insulin crossover, IGF-1. In terms of breaking up body fat is the growth hormone. 